So when I wake up in the morning and I know I'm doing an experiment, I will arrive to the lab like I'm arriving to a dance floor. The lab is a playground for me, full of opportunities to do fun stuff. One word to describe the lab. Uh, it's very difficult for me to just describe one word. I think it's a challenge, but like a fun challenge. Energetic environment, two words, sorry. Why do I see this? What does this mean? What conclusions can we draw from it? How can we build on those conclusions? I think the data is somehow like the Lego breaks. Uh, know why certain things happen and other things don't happen. You can create a building, you can create a car. It can be anything. It can be that child with the magnifying glass with that, well, you know, don't do that to ants, but you know what I mean. It's like a crime scene. It's untouched. It's the purest form of data. It can also be a roller coaster. <laughs> I would really describe it as a puzzle. You need to put everything in the correct position to make the whole pictures, to make the whole goal. You will always need others to continue your journey. The thing is, we are not alone. We cannot do anything alone. People see a doctor, but they don't know that there is an army behind the doctor. People are my favorite part of doing science. <laughs> We always have the radio on, so I can sing to the radio with my colleagues. Ik heb mijn ondergoed, mijn tandenborstel, luchtje in mijn lade. I really like these people because there's never a dull moment. Without people, no data. Yeah, what's a number going to tell me? It's numbers. It's uh, 10 is always going to be 10. But how you interpret those numbers it isn't as rigid as I, uh, as maybe some people feel it is. But I don't think there are bad results. Maybe you will use these bad results. Garbage, actually, perhaps. Maybe the conclusion isn't as black and white as you want it to be. Garbage, still valuable. We're not all in the lab going like, Eureka here, Eureka there, yay, we found 10 new cancer therapies or something like that. The biggest mis misconception is that scientists know it all. They don't, they just try to know it all. That we can make a medicine in a week. Like those kind of sci-fi movie, actually. So you just click one button and then you will get a lot of cool stuff. You'll be a hero someday. For this one product, there were like 99 other projects that started but were killed because they were not efficient enough. What I found interesting is that as long as you're not working in a clean lab, in basic research, people don't wear lab coats. Um, <laughs> as a student, you're forced to wear a lab coat and then later you're trusted to like not pour phosphorus over you. Maybe they think that pharmaceutical uh, companies are manipulating science in the way that they can uh, gain more money. So that the boss of the uh, company can like ride a Porsche. Our CEO does ride a Porsche, okay, but you don't get into science for money. You don't get into science for prestige. You get into science because you actually want to make a change, because you actually want to know what's going on because you actually want to find the truth. Well, I'm not always an optimist. Not everything is going how you expect, but that's also the fun of it. So if you only have the successful stories, that will be really boring in your life, actually. You need to fail to understand how the process works. You will also lose a lot of opportunities and chances, actually, to find the new stuff. And we are human, we make a mistake, and that is important, that we are allowed to make a mistake. I did my best and I cannot do more than that, so I don't take that personally. This is not the end of the game. That would be the beginning of, of, of a new game, actually. You fail and fail and fail and fail until you succeed. The one time that you succeed will make up for all the times that you fail. And then when you succeed, it's this amazing thing where you're just like, yes, now, finally. When you know grandma's recipe, you try it out, you do everything as well as you can. You put every single effort that you have into it, you put it in. And I talk faster and then I start to mumble because I don't, like, my head is already three sentences along and my mouth's still in sentence one, and then... You take a bite, you have the first taste. Yeah, then I get a little bit of butterflies in my stomach. And your gut, your intuition tells you, this is grandma's recipe makes me very happy and then I get very energized and then people find me annoying. Like I could scream, I could just give a high five. The best feeling is if you're explaining what you did to someone and the data that you received to someone who has no clue what you were doing and they understand it. This thing changed my life, how to deal with people. How to communicate, what kind of a communication style I should use. How to be really accurate and find the right way 
to say things. And if I want to explain anything to anyone, I got to do it in a concise manner, in an understandable manner, in a not too patronizing manner. And not jumping to conclusions. I don't think that even if we dig forever, that we could ever get to a full understanding of truth using science. There's so much left to discover. Like, there, I don't, I don't think it ever ends, or at least not in my lifetime. It is definitely the pursuit of an ap approximation of truth. To measure is to know. So if I cannot measure it, then I can also not know it. I cannot measure God. I don't know if there is a God. Maybe there is. I'll see him, her, they when I get there. Yeah. And I hope I did a good job while I'm alive. Hi. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Is there a giant spider? <laughs> Ah, okay, like I am. Uh, yeah.